speaking of discipline, it's a wonderful thing. Would you grab your swords, please? If you don't have one, we have some. If you need a Bible, please uh, raise your hand and we'll get you one. Hallelujah. Luke 9. Now, I want to share that. Um, I don't know if you've seen the videos called Chosen. They're powerful. I mean, we watch them over and over and over. I mean, they're very powerful. And, and, you know, there's so many people that haven't even seen them. I'm, gonna, I'm sharing this with you because there'd be great Christmas gifts of people to buy for people, especially those of your family members that are still not in the tabernacle. <laughs> we were at a family event yesterday. We handed out <laughs> those videos, you know, because they're still lost living outside of salvation's truth. <laughs> but anyways, it's, I just want to encourage everyone, if you know somebody, you know, because there's just some things you can't say to them because they're oh, so offensive and self-protecting, buy them a, the DVDs of The Chosen. It will penetrate their heart. Amen? Keep praying that they watch them. And Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. And Jesus said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself, take his cross daily, and follow me. Take his cross daily. In other words, pick up his and hers responsibility daily. And, and what is your responsibility? It's to reset yourself, reconnect, to get back in position you're to be ready to hear, to obey, to trust, and to execute his commands while occup occupying your positional territory. I'll say that again. Daily pick up your cross and follow me, he said. To deny yourself is vitally important. That's everything. Because self has a tendency to get in the way. Your desires, things that you desire to come first. To deny yourself is the area of fight. You must be a fighter. To pick up, uh, you know, again, you're denying yourself. Then you pick up the cross and you begin to battle for that position. So you must fight, amen. You first must surrender. You must fight and then you can follow because without a fight you will never follow. And it's a constant battle. Is it's not only without, it's within. It's a battle of all the mind, thoughts. He says, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. It's totally the opposite according to the world beliefs. For, whatever, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed of when he comes in his own glory and his fathers and the holy angels. But I tell you truly that there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Again, taking up your cross is a daily thing. It's called daily reset. Everyone say daily reset. It's our responsibility to daily reset. Amen. You know, you have to, it's kind of like update. You have to update your phones, your computers, and everything else. Well, we need the daily reset and update. Amen? And to take up your cross is a responsibility so that we daily reset, that we de reconnect, that we get back in position, that we're ready to hear, that we're ready to obey, that we're ready to trust, and that we're ready to execute what he's asking us to do while you're occupying your positional territory. Amen? This takes discipline. It takes what? Discipline. Now, discipline is enforced by two things. Determination and commitment. Determination and commitment. It's, these are the enforcers of discipline. If you're not determined, 
to complete something, to do something, to obey. Amen. If you're not committed to the full course of what is going on, then you won't be disciplined. If you're a compromiser, you won't be disciplined. Discipline is the key to everything. Jesus had to be disciplined. And you and I are to be disciplined. It's not religious. It's discipline. You, and that's a part of practicing something, isn't it? You can't be, look at you got to show up for football, practice, basketball, whatever it is. You must show up and practice. It takes discipline. You know what? You don't feel like doing it. Because you're not allowing emotions to dictate choices. You're not allowing feelings to dictate choices. You're not allowing world, global and worldly events and things that are happening in your life to dictate choices. The Bible says, forsake not to assemble. It's amazing how many people forsake assembling because of family things. Well, I need to wash the car today. Well, I got this to do. I got this to do. Undisciplined. Can God trust someone that's undisciplined? No. No. Remember, the world is being shaken to expose all wickedness and evilness. But the body is being shaken first. Because he's testing everyone, and they're disciplined in their faith, in their commitment. Everybody's being disciplined. Everybody's being tested. Where are you at? That's where there's got to be a self-examination. Where am I at today with the Lord? Am I compromising my relationship? Am I really being disciplined? Am I seeking every single day? Am I acknowledging him in everything I do? Am I getting dressed with the full armor of God every day? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do, or am I too caught up in my household goods and materialism and all my works and talents and abilities? No. That's where he says, deny yourself. Deny yourself and daily be responsible. Be disciplined, disciplined, disciplined in what you do. Is everybody okay? Discipline is the key to overcome temptation. Amen. To be successful. Discipline is the key to maintaining good health. It maintains a solid foundation. It maintains relationships. And it maintains your position. Especially in the presence of God. How about your relationship with the Lord? Amen. Amen. Discipline leads to his relationship and then a love affair. Sometimes it takes discipline just to continue with a the relationship, then all of a sudden the doors open and there's a love affair. Discipline. You know, in this we wanna we should be wanna be the best that we can be to be pleasing to God. The best that we can be to be pleasing to God. Amen? Daily reset. It takes a daily reset to be disciplined. Which, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. You know, people are disciplined to maintain their job. They show up to work on time. If you don't show up to work on time, you're going to eventually get fired. I think God would have fired half the body of Christ by now. <laughs> but he's a merciful and loving dad. Thank God. 1 Corinthians 9.24. Let's speak it together. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty. Thus, I fight not as one beats the air. But I do what? I discipline my body, myself, and bring it into subjection to the Spirit, submission to the Spirit. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. A good race is run only by discipline. Again, it's enforced by determination and commitment. Amen? To do the best. 
the best of the abilities that God's given us. Discipline will always establish trust. If you're disciplined, you will gain people's trust, but you'll gain God's trust. And when you gain God's trust and discipline, he'll, you'll gain his favor. Listen, favor is not granted just because you're a believer. Favor is earned. Amen? Favor is earned because trust is earned. And then authority from God, you become qualified for every good work of your calling. Amen? There are rewards of discipline. Some of the things is the ability to see things all the way through. See, people are short-sighted. Without discipline, you can't see things through. You'll make decisions not knowing the end result. And they go, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. Well, if you were disciplined, you would have saw it through. Amen? Gosh, I shouldn't have married that person. Well, if you were disciplined, you would have saw it through. <laughs> Hallelujah. People get married by lust and not love. Hello? <laughs> Again, discipline will always establish trust with God. It is the ability to not only see th things through, but determine times and seasons of God. You'll be able to come, overcome all trials and challenges of life by taking dominion of the carnal desires, the soulish desires, the soulish impressions. And when people become involved in those things, it releases the restraints of the flesh and they lose self-control. They're reactors and not responders. See, people are looking for a fulfillment. Discipline, tell, you know what your fulfillment is. It isn't anything but his presence. Man, when I had my visitation from the Lord and his presence ripped me apart, the first thing I realized was he was my dad and I was his son. The second thing I realized is that he was everything I was ever looking for. It was his presence. A drug addict for over 20 years, I was trying to find a fulfillment. But the enemy puts things in our path. But when you are disciplined, you discern those things. There's a discernment that you know now. No, that's not from God. That's from the devil. No, that's not from God. That's from the soulish arena. No, that's not from God. Does everybody understand? When you're disciplined, you'll be able to discern these things. If you're not disciplined, now remember, discipline is an area of daily resetting. We're daily resetting. Daily reset. Every day is a brand new day. What you did yesterday is waiting for you today. What you didn't do yesterday is waiting for you today. <laughs> Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I what? Pray that you may what? Prosper in all things. Are you going to prosper without discipline? No. And be in health and good health, just as your soul prospers. Wow. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified to the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Prosper in all things and be in good health as your desires. There are desires of harm that are in your soul. They must be converted to desires of health. How about things you eat? Oh, that tastes so good, but I know it's deadly for me. Hello? And you know, if the devil can't kill you with sin, he'll kill you with your, what you eat. But he's out to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. That's his job. He does it very well. Why? Because people are undisciplined. Undisciplined. Desires of harm converted to desires of good and health by eating, exercising. How about reading and decreeing things of God? Believing in the truth and walking in the truth. How about being disciplined to worship? The Bible says, if you seek me with all of your heart, might, and mind, you'll find me. So many people, 30 years, Christians have never found them yet. They're still waiting, but they're, they're home twiddling their thumbs, watching stuff on TV. They're, they're not seeking. He says, seek, you will find. Knock, the door shall be open. Amen? Ask, and you're going to get it. 
but many people don't get it because they ask a miss because they're really not disciplined and they just ask whatever. And God ain't releasing it. Amen? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5. Listen, without discipline, you will live in a false reality. You know the movie Matrix? If you haven't seen it, you should see the first one. That's a reality. The Lord told me I, I, I had to see it. And when I first turned it on, there was cussing, and I said, Lord, I can't watch this. He said, look, you don't think I've heard that? Watch it. And I did. And let me tell you, that's the reality. You're either eating the red pill or the blue pill. Hello? And I'm telling you right now, that is the reality. We are living in a false, the, the world, since it's been taken over by the powers of darkness, have created a false reality. Our e economic, our schools, our education, everything is a false reality. Everything is a lie. It's a lie. It's to keep people in bondage. It's to keep them as slaves. Do you know your social security number is a corporate asset? It's a stock to a company. That's why you have a social security number. It's a stock asset of a corporation. But when Trump came in office, he dismantled the corporation, restored it to a republic. It hasn't fulfilled yet. It's coming into place. Things are changing. The world is never going to be the same here shortly. We are entering more of a true reality instead of a false one. We're coming out of the false reality. Listen. When you go down to City Hall and all the public buildings, what do you see on all of them? All demonic statues, faces, pictures, all of the masons and occult signs, all of it. And every city, state, and county in the United States, because it's controlled by Babylon, even on your money. It's got the pyramid with the all C and I. It's a satanic symbol. Think about this. We've been lied to and deceived, living in the matrix, never knowing, just, yeah, no problem. Nobody's, until you get awakened by being a born again by the Spirit of God, and you have eyes now to see. But the enemy comes in, as soon as somebody's born again, what does he do? He attacks them as much as he can to prevent them. Oh, I'm saved. I'm okay now. I can still do whatever I want. Oh, no, you can't. Now you better be disciplined. Look at Esau sold his soul for a cup of porridge, right? Don't think that you can't lose your salvation. That's a lie from hell. Just because you've been born again. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Remember that. Either the demons come and get you or the angels come and get you. One or the other. But I've been a believer 30 years. Yeah, well, you fell into fornication. You were out there partying, drinking. You got uh, in a car accident. You died. You are going to hell unless you repent. Well, I don't believe that. That's too bad because you, you know what? You're undisciplined to see things through. You don't know what the Spirit. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Without discipline, you won't know his voice. You just won't know his voice. You'll be led by everything you feel. What the world tells you, especially with the media that's run by Baal, what they tell you. You won't know the truth. You'll walk in a life of confusion and uncertainty, and be misled very easily. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 8, please. Daily reset. You cannot be doing a daily reset if you are not disciplined. Listen, there's no thrill in discipline, but there's a reward. Discipline is not a respecter of persons, but it will bring you respect. Verse 8, let's speak it together, please. Be what? Sober means alert. Be vigilant means consistent. Why? Because the adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. That means he's releasing words all the time to you, fiery darts. Amen? Seeking whom he may deceive, devour, steal, kill, or destroy. 
It says resist him. Can you resist him if you're not disciplined? Amen. Does everybody get this? You can't daily reset without being disciplined. The Bible says submit to God, then you can resist the devil. Amen. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everybody is going through it. Don't just get stuck there. Go through it. Amen. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered, been attacked, hello, trialed, tested, that it may perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you, so that you maintain discipline. And to him be glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever. Alert and consist consistency will take discipline. It will, it's going to take discipline. Amen? And it's enforced by determination and commitment. How determined are you and how committed are you to the kingdom of God? Are you more committed to yourself, to your ways, your desires? How about more committed to your own ministry than relationship? Amen? James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and challenges. Does it take discipline to count it joy? Yeah. Not everybody counts it joy. People get all messed up, oppressed. Oh, my God. They call on God anyways, you know. Oh, my God. They go to the phone instead of the throne because they're undisciplined. They got to call someone and tell them. They got to go to flesh book. And spew all their flesh all over it. Oh, this is what I'm going through. Well, get out of there. Don't bring anybody else into your garbage. Go to the throne and get off the phone. Hello. Get disciplined to do that. Why? You're going to count it all joy. Why? If God's with you, who can be against you? Well, I don't believe that. Of course you don't. You're not disciplined. Does everybody get this? That means that person is not daily resetting. It's impossible to overcome if you don't daily reset. Because the enemy is looking for every loophole he can. It's like a high-powered, paid attorney. He's looking for a loophole. Amen? <laughs> so count it all joy, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Patience is endurance. But let patience or endurance have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Why? Because you know everything is going to come your way. It's going to all fall into place. Count of joy takes disciplines in patience and endurance, allowing discipline to resist fear. To resist what? Fear. Whoa. To resist anxiousness. You know, when people start going through stuff, they get really screwy. And the first thing we want to do is find a way of escape. Hello? So the enemy comes and pushes because the spirit leads. And the enemy will push with anxiousness. Did you ever make a decision you wish you didn't? Don't raise your hands. We all be lifting our feet, right? Anxiousness is fear. Anxiety is fear. Stress is fear. It's all fear. It's bound by fear. It's all connected to fear. So if you're anxious, are you able to have patience? No. This is where if you are disciplined, you will be in a place of patient. You'll be able to resist anxiety, stress. You'll be able to resist fear. And it says here, let patience have its perfect work so that you are perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Amen. You're resisting everything because you're daily resetting. He says, and if you lack wisdom, ask him. See, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Who, and God, who, ask God who gives it all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to you. But make sure you ask in faith. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed into and fro by the wind. If you are undisciplined when you doubt, let me tell you, discipline maintains 
belief and destroys doubt. For let not that man suppose he's going to receive anything from the Lord. Why? He's double-minded and unstable. Why? Because they're not daily resetting. Because they're not disciplined. Is everybody okay? This is so vitally important. While God's testing our faith, he's testing our determination and commitment. He wants to know whether you're genuine or not. He wants to know whether you're generic or genetic. Isaiah 40. You know, the more you do this, the more you're disciplined, the more it becomes a part of your life. Just like anything else, it becomes automatic. You get up and you maintain your routine of discipline. You're getting disconnected from the world. You're shaking off everything. You're getting reconnected to the Lord. You're reconnecting to his presence. And then you're warfaring. I don't know if you've got a penetrating prayer book, but this booklet will help you tremendously. Tremendously. It's even got a, a thing in there for your daily routine. It's, uh, it's called the Welcome to the Kingdom. It's a guideline. It tells you about asking the Holy Spirit to help you and teach you. Put on the full room of God. Decree Psalm 91. Apply the blood of Jesus. Surrender your will and ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit and fellowship with believers. It's that simple. I mean, you know, people can't even do this. Spend time in the Word. Worship is the key. But you can't be a worshiper without discipline. Amen? You know, it takes discipline. I, and, and once discipline becomes a part of the routine, it's automatic. It's automatic. Isaiah 40, 28. You know, so many times people don't like change. Amen? They just don't like to change. I don't like change anyways. I really have solid gold and silver, but, you know. Hallelujah. They just, but you know what? If you're disciplined and you're willing to shift whenever the Lord says, shift! He says, Holy shift! This way, that way, right? You're disciplined. Yes, sir! You're ready to obey his command and do it. Isaiah 40, 28, let's speak it together. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait, wait means, listen, the enemy's always trying to push you. That means you got to wait. When you don't know what to do, don't do nothing. Wait. You ain't got to figure it all out now. God's got it in control. Let him have the last say and you'll be all right. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Waiting on the Lord is a renewing. It's a place of reset. Amen? Waiting is patience and endurance. And he can actually, actually, when you're waiting, you're disciplined. God wants to know if you're going to wait. You know, again, I've shared this before. God's famous game is hide and seek. He loves to play that. It's his famous game. Find me. You know, you can be counting up for 14 years. <laughs> Where are you at, Lord? You got a good hiding place. I'm right in front of you. You just didn't see me. When you're disciplined, you'll sense. There's more of a discernment. There's more sensitivity. Your senses are now in line. Not carnal. Spiritual senses. They're in line. See, it takes a process. You know when you drive a car and you know the it's not in tune. And it begins to skip and you get whiplash and stuff like that. But when it's in tune, it's running smooth. It's like a river that flows. And that river will flow through you when you're disciplined. There's no hesitations. You just do it. Hallelujah. I don't like when I'm driving with someone and they're hesitating, especially in a four-way stop sign or four-way light. 
No hesitating. Which way should I go? I'm like, ah! James 1.12. My, teaching my daughter how to fi drive a standard and she stalled in the middle of a four-way red light and she started crying I'm like, this is no time for crying put your foot on the clutch and hit it let's get out of here oh I don't know if I can do this anyways she did it now she's very happy she tells everybody she can drive a standard hallelujah <laughs> James 1 12 hallelujah and what do we have here? Let's speak it. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. So what about the man who doesn't endure temptation? Cursed. Cursed. Now, a curse comes, you know, the enemy tries to get us to curse ourselves. Now, we know that there's inherited curses and so forth. That's why when you go to the doctor, he checks your blood. See what curses are coming down the line. But they don't think of it as curses. They just think it as disease. But it's actually a curse. But those can be broken off by repenting for the forefathers' sins. Now, but in this, the, the enemy tries to get you to self-impose curse yourself. If you get cursed, he has access. It opens the door to the enemy. That's the purpose of a curse, is to open the door so that the demon can come in. Then he has the legal right to access you. I didn't say possess you, but access you. Amen? But of course, he'll try and bring more so you go deeper and deeper and deeper into darkness and you can come be possessive if you continue to go that far again. But the Holy Spirit never gives up on us. Amen? Never gives up on us. So and that's why some people have backslidden into drugs and alcohol, go really, really deep and get far, far away. And some of them stay away from the Lord because they're running from the light into the darkness for many years. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they finally awaken. I, gotta, I can't do this no more. They're probably hearing the screams of hell, knowing that and we used to have this call from this woman, I'm having dreams of fire and going to hell. Yeah, we are living with 14 guys and doing this and doing that and whatever, using drugs. What do you think you're going to do? At least God's telling you, come out of it. Amen? So blessed is the man who endures temptation, but cursed is one who doesn't. And why wouldn't you endure temptation? Not daily resetting because of not being disciplined. And let me share this with you. You may skip a day or two and think you got away with it, but everybody else will know. Everybody will know. Why? Because your attitude, motive, your desires, your choices are different. They're different. Because without being connected to the Lord, you're miserable. Without being connected to his presence, you're miserable. You're still looking for false fulfillments everywhere else. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say that when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires, emotions, lust, and then enticed. And when the desires he have conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. Again, they didn't overcome the desires because they're not daily resetting. They're not daily resetting. Amen? Blessed, favor, that's what it is. Those who are disciplined to endure and overcome temptations of the oppression, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of self. These are those who qualified of approval to receive the crown of life. There's a qualification for everything. You know, you have to qualify to get healed. Everything is, re everything is required. Amen? Everything is required. You had to do something to get salvation, didn't you? Amen. You had to repent, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and then maintain it as to follow. See, the word believes means to what? Follow. If you say you're a believer and not a follower, you're really not a believer. God looks as you as a liar. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16.
So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are shadows of things to come. That's the Old Testament. But the substance is of Christ, which is the anointing of God. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking heed in the false humility and worship of angels, intruding in those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up in his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and the doctrines of men. These things indeed have a, an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. In other words, you'll know those who are disciplined. You'll know those who daily reset themselves. Amen? Discipline to hold fast and be steadfast, to maintain a position with no wavering or compromise, excusing or blaming. Amen? Holding fast to the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. It's the fear of the Lord is reverence, honor, and respect. In Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. Does it take discipline to do that daily? Yes. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, the resetting of your thoughts on a daily basis, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 2 Corinthians 4. You know, when you get sideswiped by things of the world, I wasn't expecting that. Things of disappointment, somebody passes away unexpectedly, you know, things of that degree. If you're disciplined and daily reset, it's not going to move you. Because everybody, why? Because you know all things are going to work for the good. I didn't say you wouldn't mourn a little bit, whatever it is. But you will maintain course. That's the bottom line, maintaining course. But you can't do that if you don't daily reset and you're not disciplined. You'll waver. You'll compromise. 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being what? Renewed, resetting day by day. For our light affliction, not for everybody. Everybody thinks their afflictions are the worst. I'm the only one. No, you're not. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, <laughs> is working for us. Everyone say it's working for me. More exceeding the eternal weight of glory, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, and the things which are not seen are eternal. A daily reset is required with cooperation with the Spirit of God. Amen? Colossians 3.5. Therefore, put to death, put to death, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Can you do that without resetting? Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. 
where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put to death your members of corruption and put on a new man of discipline. And I'm going to close with 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. In other words, be disciplined more and more. <laughs> Amen. Be consistent, be alert, and daily reset. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel and sanctification and honor, that separation. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage in, of or defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Amen? So we should know how to maintain. Amen? It's going to take a daily reset. It takes a daily reset. Amen? Without daily reset, you don't make it. We get calls all the time from people that have been through here, that even graduated and completed, but they didn't do their aftercare. And because they didn't do their aftercare, they didn't maintain discipline and a daily reset. Could be eight years later, ten years later, and all of a sudden, man, they're crying. They're a mess, thinking about suicide and everything else. Lost their families, lost everything they worked for. Let me tell you, the devil doesn't quit. He doesn't give up. He waits for you to compromise. He waits for that open door. He waits. Because, see, when you were born, demons are assigned to you. They're assigned to every one of us. As we grow more and more in the Lord, stronger ones, are, they're replaced with stronger ones. They come in witches and everything else. Believe me, they followed my wife and myself, even to services, when we first got saved. There were witches in the back praying against us the whole time. They ended up coming to my house and everything. I got stories on all that. Testimony. This is reality. You and I are living in a false reality owned by the powers of darkness. But the light of Christ Jesus has come. And now he's spreading his light through this darkness arena. And he's about to come through the body of Christ in a greater and mightier way. He's going to pour out the early and later rain with the second anointing. It's called the second mantle that was put on Elijah. It's coming and we're getting ready for it. So I encourage you, please, Maintain that discipline and reset every day in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.